Hey, what's up guys? This is Alex and today I want to answer one question that we all tend to have as novices when we're just starting out with orchestral music. I also get this question asked a lot in this channel, so I thought of making one video to address it once and for all. So the question is, what type of orchestral library should I get when just start, when I'm just starting out? Which library is the best one to start from? And this is a nice question because there's such an overwhelming choice of libraries out there and many of those are also quite expensive, so it's you know, difficult to choose and you do not want to make the wrong choice because you, you're, you're gonna regret if you spend 800 euros on a library and think, oh shit, this is, this is, I do not like this, you know? So, <clears throat> to avoid that trouble for you, I thought of making this video where I'm gonna make the distinction between the three categories I think that there are of orchestral libraries and which one you should aim at getting first. And I'm gonna use Final Fantasy XII as an example. I know it sounds weird, but um, actually bear with me because it's... It's a, it's a cool example I found in this game about this. So, as you might know, you, the orchestra, you know, is based on, on very different instruments and each instrument is assigned to a section and each, each of these sections is split in different instruments, you know. There's also soloist instruments. Now, when you're, uh, you know, writing a very professional orchestra, orchestration, you tend to write in such a way to uh, arrange it differently on every single instrument, give every single instrument a different interpretation of what's going on, etc. So you may, might achieve a, you know, a realistic and rich orchestration because every single instrument does something a little bit different, you know, and that breathes more life into the track or into your uh, composition. Although when you're just starting out, you might not have any idea how to do that because you might not have the knowledge uh, to distinguish the what you can do with each instrument to to know how to arrange for. I don't know, uh, trumpets differently from French horn and stuff. And that's normal, because when you're a beginner, you do not have the, the skills to do that, you know? And, like, I'm gonna... Here's, here's where uh, the example of Fantasy XII co comes in. In this game, uh, there's a cool system that doesn't allow you to, equ to, um, to use, like, high-level weapons on low-level characters. Now, this is because... In reality, if you have a warrior who's really weak, you cannot, like, he, if you give him a legendary sword, he's probably even gonna break it because he has no idea how to use it. So, this game doesn't allow you to do that. And <clears throat> instead, it enforces you to uh, uh, assign to your characters weapons that they have the skill to use. Now, you should do the same with orchestral libraries. You should not aim at getting the legendary. Hans Zimmer percussion 280 gigabytes of huge Hans Zimmer. No, you should instead aim at getting low level libraries that are made in such a way to sound great out of the box already. So, <clears throat> those are the type of libraries which are the best for beginners because, again, as a beginner, you have no idea how to layer, how to orchestrate, and how to treat every single instrument. Uh, what are uh, the characteristics, the key characteristics of every single instrument? So, a library which is less expensive, less expensive and less precise might be your best bet. In this example, Berlin Orchestra Inspire, which is a library from Orchestral Tours, which is going to be dropping, um, I think, this week, is a nice example because this library costs only 250 euros now because it's the, the limited price for the pre-order, but it's going to cost 400 euros uh, when it's out. And this library, the cool thing is that it includes the whole orchestra, so you have the strings, the brass, the woodwinds, and the percussion. It doesn't include choir. Although, um, you know, you get the four main modules, and it costs 400 euros. It's pretty much like you paid 100 euros for each model, which is not a lot, because if you go and check out the um, libraries based on single instrument sections, you're going to see, like, for example, Cinematic Studio Strings is going to cost 400 dollars which is the price the full price almost of burning orchestra inspire and cinematic studio strings only gives you the strings while this gives you strings brass uh, blah 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 now the reason why this costs way more is that this library like the, the, the this library burning orchestra inspire is from the first type which is the type of libraries that are based on ensembles cinematic studio strings is from the second type which is a type of library libraries that are based on sections and allow you to write for every single individual instrument inside that section and have a lot of articulations and have mic positions and stuff like that. So libraries like Cinematic Studio Strings cost more because they are produ produced with more precise if that's, oh, um, yeah, if that's a word. And uh, they, uh, <clears throat> they're done in such a way to give you more freedom. 
so that you can make your, make your tracks sound more pro. That's why they cost more. But this one costs way less. It doesn't give you that freedom, but it, gives, it saves you the trouble to having to know how to orchestrate and how to layer to write good music, you know? Because if you write anything with Berlin Orchestra Inspire, since this is made of ensemble, which is already layered together, like for example, for the brass, you don't have, you don't have like uh, French horn, trumpets, etc. You have French horn plus trumpets inside the same, inside the, uh, the same patch because you have these ensembles only. Since you have ensembles already pre-layered, pre-orchestrated and pre-mixed, etc., etc., they're going to sound amazing straight out of the box and they do not need any, or rather, they do not need much knowledge from you, from your part, much skill from your part to be able to use them. They're like the low-level weapons in Final Fantasy XII, which uh, you're able to use straight from level one. And like those weapons, they do not cost a lot. And they are the best to practice because, again, they, they save you a lot of time and they make your track sound good. While people who do start with Hans Zimmer percussion, either because they have the money for it or, or because they, are, they pirated it, which is something I do not recommend, both because it harms the sample library developers who are like people who have dreams just like you and are trying to do what they are passionate about in, about in life. Second, because it's a hindrance to use libraries like this one if you do not have the skills to do it. If I swear to God, like if, if you get on Zimmer Percussion and you have no skills at all, despite this library being 280 gigabytes and having 86,000 samples, your music written with this is going to sound much more shitty than it's, that it's, than it's going to sound if you use the Burning Orchestra Inspired Percussion Ensemble. Why? The reason why is that Libraries like Hans Zimmer Percussion or Cinematic Studio Strings are, are done, again, in such a way to be as precise as possible, to allow you to reach a very realistic sound and to give you the freedom to do whatever the hell you want. They do not have ensembles like that one, like, 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 Burn, like Burning Orchestra Inspire. Sometimes they do, though, but <clears throat> they're mostly based on precisiveness and freedom. So they have a natural... <clears throat> I'm not, this is not the very correct word to say, but they have a bland sound. Again, this is not the correct way, but they have a blend sound that uh, allows you to build interesting layers. You know, they, they give you that freedom. While with Berlin Orchestra Inspire, you have a sound which is already predetermined and you cannot change it. If you try to layer it, you know, uh, it's going to sound funny because, again, I, these are ensembles based on the instruments which are coupled together and pre-orchestrated and stuff. So <clears throat> that's... Um, that's that's a limit they have. So, for example, if you want to, if you get more expert, once you use Burning Orchestra Inspire for a few times, you know, and you want to write, you have a better hang of orchestration now, and you want to write something, for example, that has a trumpet uh, part, which is different from uh, the French horn part, you cannot do that with Burning Orchestra Inspire because the trumpets and the French horns are in the same ensemble. So, <clears throat> in that case, it might be a good idea to get a uh, uh, brass, library based on sections and not on ensembles. So like a, a brass library, which is only brass instruments, for example, Cine Brass or uh, Berlin uh, Orchestra Brass from Orchestra Tools, stuff like that, that also have multiple mic position and, you know, m more articulations, stuff like that. That's a good idea. To, like if you want to, like if you're a bit more expert and want to write brass parts independently from for each instrument etc might be a great idea to get a, to get a brass library of the second type which is the uh, the library is based on sections um then <clears throat> you know same thing for percussion if, if you find that your percussion um if, if you're able to write amazing percussion and you want to have more freedom to, to layer them as much as you want etc might be a good idea to get a percussive only library like damage or Hans Zimmer Percussion, but I actually didn't try this yet, although I heard it's a great library, a really great library. Other percussive libraries are um, Rhapsody Orchestral Percussion. Also, like when you start to get those libraries based on, on sections, for example, when you get a, a percussive library which is based on percussion only, you tend to also have, you know, they also tend to be uh, based on a certain style. So, for example, Damage is much more hybrid, hybrid hard hitting. Rhapsody Orchestral Percussion instead is. Um, Percussion library, again, based on the organic sound. So you have timpani, cymbals, and stuff. And in damage, you have much more aggressive ensembles. 
And uh, yeah, those are my two go-to uh, percussion libraries. As for string libraries, I use Cinematic Strings 2, along with Metropolis Arc 1. And Metropolis Arc 1 is a hybrid between an uh, ensemble library and a section library, because it has both ensembles for the strings, and also uh, individual instrument patches for the brass and the choir. So it's a bit of both, you know. And you also have like band, like guitars and percussion, but I do not use those. And uh, Metropolis Arc also has a lot of articulations, and it has the mic position, like you can alter the mic positions and stuff. While Burning Orchestra Inspired doesn't have as much articulation, you don't have the freedom to uh, change the uh, mic position at all. So, uh, yeah, this one is an hybrid between a section-based library and an ensemble-based library. But uh, you see, I use it in every single video because I like its sound, because it's the most, probably the most loud orchestral library out there right now. But uh, the thing is that Metropolis Arc, for example, doesn't allow you. It, it wasn't recorded at low dynamic levels. It wasn't recorded to, like, it doesn't have a natural calm sound. You cannot simulate a calm sound with this library because it wasn't recorded at calm levels. So I use it along with Cinematic Strings 2 for when I want to write calm strings passages or when I want to write, for example, uh, strings passages with bass and cellos, which are different between each other and stuff, you know? Which is something you cannot do with Metropolis Arc, not correctly, because you have a high strings patch and a low strings patch. So, <clears throat> yeah, Metropolis Arc is one what I use. For strings, I use Cinematic Studio Strings. For brass, I still use Metropolis Arc 1, but I'm aiming at getting another uh, brass library. For percussion, I use Damage, and, um, yeah, as I said, Rhapsody Orchestra Percussion. I also use a, a bit of trailer hits and stuff from Audio Imperia, scenes from the multiverse, and... Uh, Juggernaut from Impact, Sound, Impact Soundworks. Those type of uh, trailer effects libraries are another type of library um, which are useful if you write trailer music. And those tend to be much more, uh, you know, uh, variable. They tend to have all the trailer effects. You have trailer hits, risers, and uh, reverse sounds, and whoosh bangs, and stuff. So those are useful for that. Juggernaut and scenes from the multiverse. And also... Boom Library uh, Cinematic Trailers Design 1. And then there's a third type of library, which is not based on section nor ensembles. It's the library based on soloists. So with soloists, I mean the, the, those persons, those virtuosos, you tend to have, which play uh, in front of the orchestra <coughs> uh, alone, the, the instrument. That, like, for example, Tina Guo is the soloist for Hans Zimmer, I think. Yeah, she, she is. And I went to see them like live last week, I think. In Milan here. And so a soloist is again a virtuoso who knows how to play his or her instrument <laughs> like in incredible ways, in incredible expressive ways. Now these soloists bring even more life to the orchestra because again they uh, they have they reach the highest highest peak of expression and uh the highest peak of dynamis dynamism and stuff in, in um the way they play which is something that the ensembles cannot do because when you have a uh, you know 20 players playing together uh you have you know you have a sound that you know you you don't you cannot distinguish how every single player is playing uh, you know their instrument you distinguish you hear the whole sound of the 20 players playing together while when you hear a single instrument playing alone that's much more of a difference you hear all the new nuances that's the word you hear all the different like all the details and stuff and now you can like the, this is the reason why um soloist libraries are usually quite expensive for example here 300 dollars uh, you get one cello that's expensive you know compared to 400 euros and you get the whole orchestra but the reason why is that this was recorded in such a way to sound as expressive as a virtuoso, you know, as a single player who plays his his instrument instruments like he he's an angel descendant from the, the heavens, stuff like that, you know. And uh, <clears throat> this is the type of library that you can get. doesn't doesn't require, you know, a huge knowledge to use it. Although, if you want to use a soloist library, well, you should have a bit of knowledge of how that instrument sounds naturally. So. Uh, again, like you're you're not gonna arrange for solo cello like you're arrange for um, a whole string section. It's a bit different, you know. It's, uh, if you want to achieve uh, in, uh, 
a convincing solo cello. So one thing to do is if you want to get a soloist library, I suggest to do that again after a while when, when you get a little bit more expert on how to write, for example, solo parts. And maybe you want solo parts in your song to reach that emotional high to give your song that um, additional expression. It might be a good idea to get one of these. Also, Tina Guo Solo Cello, you have a $90, $90 versions of it, version of it, although it only has one articulation, which is legato slash sustain. And uh, yeah, it's not as in-depth as this one. There's also a Solo Cello Designer from Eitaio. This costs a little bit less than Tina Guo. It's uh, $149, but it's still way more like... four. Compared to Berlin Orchestra, which is 400 at full price, 400 euros. This is almost one fourth of the price. It's just one instrument. In here, you get the whole orchestra. So you see, again, as a beginner, it makes much more sense to get one of these because it's less expensive and it's, it requires less skill from you to sound great because it's prepared already in such a way to sound amazing straight out of the box. So... I suggest you to start from the bottom and make your way up to the top without skipping your steps, because that will be pretty much like saying, hey, I want to do, you know, math or trigonometry, but I want to start straight away from, uh, you know, an uh, equation or, uh, oh shit, I do not, don't know, do not know trigonometry terms in, in uh, English, but yeah, I want to do math, I want to start straight from equation, and that's dumb to say if you do not even know how addition or multiplication works, you know? You have to start from the bottom and you make your way up. That's the best approach for, uh, you know, choosing your orchestra libraries. And again, when, like, when you want to uh, choose, you know, which library to get next, you should always think about, okay, what limit have I reached with the libraries I personally use now? For example, as I said, I bought Cinematic Strings 2 when uh to to compensate for metropolis arc one uh the inability to uh, to do calm stuff you know but i didn't buy them together like i bought metropolis arc one i used it, used it for a while and then i was writing a song where i wanted to write a very dynamic passage very calm and stuff like that and i was able to because i spent quite some time writing music on libraries like very younger so inspired metropolis arc one but I wanted this passage to be, you know, more emotional, more precise stuff, more or better orchestrated. So that's when I, I thought, all right, all right, that's a good time to get a strings library like Cinematic Strings 2. And that's when I bought it, you know. So I suggest you to start from the bottom and build upon with upgrades when you feel like the software you're currently using is limiting you. But I assure you, in the beginning... Softwares like Burning Orchestra Inspired are not going to limit you. They're going to lift you up a lot compared to what Hans Zimmer Percussion will do in the beginning. Once you get expert enough to use Hans Zimmer Percussion as, <clears throat> as it's intended to, to its full potential, this Hans Zimmer Percussion is going to take your orchestration to insane levels. But before you're even able to understand how to use it, you should not even look at it. Just like... Final Fantasy XII characters do not look at swords. They do not have the license to use. So that's it for this video. And guys, if you have questions about anything about how to write orchestral music, like questions outside the realm of actual composing and stuff like that, you know, about mindset or how to develop yourself a career and stuff, uh, ask them in the comments because sometimes I make ramblings like this one where I answer the questions I see asked more often on this channel or in, on the internet because I want to bring you guys that information that is not easy to acquire as a beginner and it's not that much present on the internet for some reason. So if you have questions about anything, feel free to ask them in the comments. Also, I'm going to start to, like, I'm going to resume doing private lessons so we can also discuss this stuff uh, in private over Skype. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm going to resume them soon. I'm going to make an announcement on YouTube when I do. So stay tuned for that if you're interested. And as always, let me know what you thought about this video, if this helped you or not. If this helped you, maybe share it with a friend who might earn some value out of it as well, you know, and that might help the channel as well growing because there's only so much people I can reach. So if you find this channel is helping you in general, it may be a good idea if you want to help me out to uh, spread it to whoever you think might find it useful. Do not spam it around, for, to, around to, to people who 
are not interested in this stuff. But if you know composers who are learning like you or who would earn value out of this channel or people who would love to start composing but they don't have the courage, send them here to me. Because here I'm trying to bring you guys the value to get started and build yourself an amazing music career like I'm trying to do myself. So that, was, that will be it for this video. I hope this helped you out and I'll see you later.